Cuba is racing to get more people vaccinated against COVID-19 as cases surge. Health officials say one of their homegrown vaccines is highly effective, but the shots can't come soon enough. More than 2,000 new cases were reported Wednesday, breaking another daily record of new infections. The virus is one factor in the uptick of migrants attempting the sea crossing from Cuba to the United States, and it's a dangerous journey that has cost an unknown number of lives. Patrick Altman has this exclusive report on Cubans willing to risk, risk everything to start that new life. A U.S. Coast Guard cutter enters Cuban waters carrying migrants stopped at sea while trying to reach the United States. Under an agreement between the two countries, the Cubans are sent back to the island after being picked up by the U.S., leaving the island usually on barely seaworthy rafts or smuggled out in its speedboats by human traffickers. While in recent years, the number of Cubans making the illegal journey by boat had dwindled, now as the communist-run island is hit by the twin impacts of the pandemic and increased U.S. economic sanctions, hundreds of Cubans are again attempting the treacherous sea crossing. Cuban officials who gave CNN rare access to a migrant repatriation say they are concerned by the spike in activity. They put people's lives at risk. They have too many people on board, he says. Then you have people trafficking with speedboats, and they also overload those boats to make more money. It can take days to make the 90-mile journey across the Florida Straits, and only seconds for a trip to turn deadly. Neither the U.S. nor Cuba can say how many people have died in 2021 attempting the crossing. Juliette Cordes says her brother, Pedro Angel, was one of at least five people lost at sea after their brother capsized, leaving the island in March. What we want is to know, she says, to have some news, however tough it is, but at least know what happened to him. <laughs> Despite the risks, many Cubans are increasingly desperate to leave the island. Some sell all their possessions to pay for the trip. This woman, who was returned by the U.S. Coast Guard, attempted the hazardous trip, carrying her eight-month-old baby. After the U.S. Embassy in Havana shut down visa services nearly four years ago following mysterious health incidents, more than 100,000 Cubans have been unable to obtain visas granted to them to visit or emigrate to the U.S. Cubans have to travel to a third country to apply for a visa to enter the United States legally. It's a costly and lengthy process that during the pandemic has been next to impossible to do. Many people say they can no longer afford to wait, even if it means breaking the law or risking their lives at sea. While the numbers of Cubans leaving by boat are far less than during the rafters crisis of the 1990s and Mariel boat lift of the 1980s, Cuban officials say they want to engage with Washington before the flow of migrants increases. The trend is there. And the difficulties that Cuba has today had not faced for over a decade. So the recipe and the conditions are there for an uncontrolled migration through the ocean, something that we want to avoid. So far, Biden advisors have said Cuba is not a priority for the administration. But as the pandemic and Trump era sanctions continue to cause havoc here, an increasing number of Cubans with nothing left to lose could create a crisis that becomes impossible to ignore. Patrick Gottman, CNN, Orozco, Cuba.